Praise God. Let's lift our hands to heaven as we pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for your presence that is here, your anointing. And thank you for a great conference from Friday. We appreciate you Friday night, Saturday, whole day. And today, the conclusion. We want to thank you for all that you have done. Holy Spirit, we yield once again to you that you will have your way, that you will close us off this year's conference in an amazing way and let your name be glorified. Lord, I pray that everyone that is here today will not live the same way they came. Holy Spirit, break yokes, break chains, empower us and let us tap into your divine ability. Thank you, Lord, for doing it. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Amen. Glory. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to once again deeply appreciate um, our mother in the Lord, Pastor Bernadette, and uh, the leadership of this church. Let's put our hands together for them. Thank you very much. I count it a great honor to be here to bring God's word, um, especially the closing service of our conference this year. I will read the book of First Kings this morning, the book of First Kings chapter 18, and I'll read verse 41 through 46, a passage of scripture that many of us would be familiar with. The word of God says, And Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Somebody say, a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went out to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down between the earth, upon the earth put his face between his knees and said to his servant go up now look toward the sea and he went up and looked and said there is nothing and he said go again seven times and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said behold there ariseth a cloud out of the sea like a man's hand and he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Verse 46. Can we read verse 46 out loud? One to go. And the hand of the Lord was on and he guarded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Now, I'm going to read a second scripture, the book of James chapter 5, and I'll read verse 16 to 18. James chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. The word of God says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent, prayer of a righteous man availeth much verse 17 elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly somebody say earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit somebody say praise the lord Say with me, say, God is more than able. Say that one more time. All right, so this weekend we have been tapping into the ability of God. God is more than able. But I want us to realize also that God de desires to walk through us. God does not like to walk alone. It walks with us. It walks through us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory to God. 
How many of you know that if it's left to God, the whole world will be saved by now? If God was the one doing the evangelism. But God has chosen to walk through us. And so many times we limit God. We limit God by our faith. We limit God by our thinking. We limit God in so many ways. I pray that from today and from this conference, you will no longer place a limit on God. Hallelujah. Now, I'm sharing with us this morning the message titled, Everything Happens Twice. Say that to somebody. Say, everything happens twice. Now, and I, I'm going to be as simple as possible that before something takes place in the natural, it takes place first in the realm of the spirit. Do you understand that? If you are with me, wave your hand. All right, good. So, before, listen carefully, before anything happens here on earth, it takes place first in the realm of the spirit. Before a marriage breaks up in the natural, it broke up first in the realm of the spirit. Before somebody dies in the natural, they died first in the realm of the spirit. That is a very important spiritual law. Are you getting what I'm saying? Very important. Now, if you read the book of Genesis chapter 15, you can read that when you get home. God was speaking to Abraham and was telling him what was going to happen 500 years time. He told him, he said, Abraham, your children will be slaves in a strange land for 400 years. And this was God telling him what will happen 500 years before it happened. Why? Because it already happened in the spirit realm. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? For example, the next 50 years of this country has been determined in the realm of the spirit. It's just waiting to unfold. So tell somebody this morning and say, there is a spiritual realm. There is a spiritual realm. Those of you on the gallery, give me a wave. Give me a wave. Praise God. Tell somebody beside you and say, there is a spiritual realm. All right. Now, in the Bible, that realm is called different names. It's called heavenly places. All right. The Bible said God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. It's also called glory. The Bible said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in in glory that is God's realm are you get what I'm saying It's the spirit realm and that is where God wants you to operate from God doesn't want you to operate from this three-dimensional world God wants you to operate from the realm of the spirit that means you have one foot in the physical realm and you have one foot in the spiritual realm is somebody listening to what I'm saying this is very very important because the three-dimensional world in which we live is limited. For example, a doctor can give you an opinion. They can tell you, we saw something, you understand, in your body. Or you, you're going to have to live with these for the rest of your life. But listen, any opinion you get in this realm is limited. The, the opinion that is final is the opinion coming from the realm of the spirit, from God's realm. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many of you know that they told Abraham, you know, you, you can't have a child. The, the body was old. But listen, when God steps in, when the spirit realm steps in, anything is possible. So they can tell you and say, you're a parent or you are this or you are that. But listen, once you get God's opinion on the matter, that is the end of story. Because whatever God says must come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. Very important. So now faith is interaction with God's realm. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You see, faith is believing that there is a realm that you cannot see. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? It's out there. How many of you know that angels are here right now as we're here? All right. But how many of you can see them? You can't see them. Why? Because they are over in the realm of the spirit. But it's real anyhow. 
you know, if I told you and say, um, do you have kidneys? You say, yes, of course I got kidneys. Have you ever seen your kidneys? No, you never saw your kidneys. But then you believe that you have your kidneys. In the same way, you never, some people say, oh, I can't believe in what I don't see. But there are many things that we relate with that we don't see and we actually believe in. I just gave you an example. You see, you, we don't see God with our optical eyes, but there is a faith inside you. That's why you came here this morning that tells you that there is a God and that that God is alive. That the spirit realm is real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are going to change anything in the physical realm, you have to learn to tap into the spirit realm. That's where it's going to change. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 verse 6, the Bible said, it said, anyone that comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Can you tell somebody and say, don't take opinion only from this realm. Say, take opinion from God's realm. Tell them, say, God has the last word. Say, God has the final say. Amen. So the passage where we read, the Bible tells us that the prophet Elijah said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 41. Can you put it on the board, please? Elijah said to her, I hear, everybody say, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Now, let me ask you a question. In the natural, was it raining? Huh? Those of you that, have, that know that passage, in the natural, was it raining? So where was he hearing the sound from? Where was the rain? In the spirit realm. So in the spirit realm, rain was falling already, but in the natural, there was no rain. Do you understand it now? In the realm of the spirit, there was rain, abundance of rain, but in the natural, I can't see anything, not even one drop. There's no drop of rain. The challenge now is this. How can I bring what is happening in the realm of the spirit into the physical? In other words, it's raining in the spirit realm. But how can I get that into the physical realm? So the Bible tells us this, that Elijah said to him, get up, eat, drink. There's a sound of abundance of rain. But in verse 45, the Bible said, It came to pass in the meanwhile, the heaven was black with clouds. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And there was a great rain. Before that rain fell, between verse 41 and verse 45, there was something that Elijah did. And that's what I want to tell you about this morning, what he did. But listen, in the spirit realm, you can be able to see things. All right? Even before they happen here, Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. And remember this, God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So where did Isaiah see the Lord? In the spirit. You see, in the spirit realm, you can, you can be able to handle things. You can be able to touch things. You can be able to feel things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. In the, in the spirit realm, you can even taste things. I, I don't know if this has happened to you before. How many of you, you know, were physically hungry and then you went to prayer and you spent time with the Lord and by the time you were done praying, you were full? Has it ever happened to you before? God filled you. That, that's happened to me several times. All right? I, the, the presence of God, the glory of God fills you up. That is how Moses was able to fast for 40 days and 40 nights without eating because God's glory filled him up. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Everything happens twice. It takes place first in the spirit realm and then it takes place in the physical realm. Elijah art a sound of abundance of rain. Now, let me tell you four important facts 
about the spirit realm. Number one, what is happening in the natural is not always the same thing that is happening in the realm of the spirit. Whatever is happening in the natural is not the same thing happening in the realm of the spirit. Listen to me very carefully this morning. Don't let your life be limited to this realm. God has something bigger for you. God has something better for you. God has something greater for you. For example, in this realm, all right, you may be poor, but in the spirit realm, you are rich. In this realm, you may be sick physically, but in the spirit realm, you are healed and you are whole. In this realm, all right, Elijah heard that rain was falling, but, you know, in the spirit realm, he had that, but in this realm, it was dry. And you see, this is the reason why you and I must pray. Because you want it to be on earth as it is in heaven. How many of you know that in the spirit realm you are already blessed? Because the Bible said God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In the spirit realm you are already blessed. Now the challenge is how do I get what is in the spirit realm to the physical realm? The second thing I want to tell you is this. Whatever has taken place or is taking place in the realm of the spirit does not happen automatically in the natural realm. That's why Jesus taught us to pray. You know, some people say, oh, you know, um, if, if, if God is real, um, why, why do bad things happen to good people? Why does, do, do we have so many calamities in the world? I'll tell you the reason why. Because... Even though God is a good God and God is real, the will of God does not get done automatically on earth. Somebody has to pull it out of the realm of the spirit and bring it to the physical realm. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Glory to God. I'm going somewhere. Now, the third thing I want to tell you this morning is this. It is your responsibility. Let me not tell somebody, say, it is your responsibility to bring heaven to earth. They didn't hear what you said. Say, it is your responsibility to bring heaven to earth. How many of you like to bring heaven to earth? How many of you know that is your job? That is my job. That's why Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father. Your what? Your will be done where? As it is where? In the realm of the spirit. That means whatever is happening there, God wants it to happen here. There are many of you here who are great men and women of God in the spirit, but in the natural, you are not it yet. Many of you are great business people in the spirit, but in the natural, you are not there yet. That's why you have to pull are you getting what I'm saying? What is in the realm of the spirit into the natural? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? And that is your responsibility. Tell somebody it is your responsibility. They didn't hear what he said. Say it is your responsibility. Listen to this. If you are going to bring the realm of the spirit or bring heaven into the natural like Elijah did, then it takes a lot of work. Now, do you know what the Bible said Elijah did? The Bible said Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel and put his face between his knees and began to pray. How many of you pray like that? Anybody ever done that? You understand? For several hours. I want you to try it when you get home and tell me how easy it is to do that. That is a very unusual prayer posture, but that is what it takes to bring the realm of God into this physical realm. To bring the ability of God in the spirit realm to bring it to this realm, that is what it takes. Now, let me give you some keys this morning to do that. Number one, you must have conviction. Everybody say conviction. All right, conviction means faith. You must believe that whatever you need exists already in the spirit realm. If you need a child, the child is already there in the spirit realm. You need a job, it's already there where? 
in the spirit realm. Anything you need, you've already been given it. Where? In the spirit realm. Have that conviction. It is there. That conviction is what the Bible calls faith. He that comes to God must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, you know, for instance, when you talk about the presence of God, all right, that God is with me today. God is with me right now. Don't relate with God as though God is so far away. No, by your faith, you can bring God nearer to you. You say, God is with me. Somebody say, God is with me. So the first thing is conviction, knowing that whatever you need, all right, already exists. God has all your answers. God has everything you need and your faith is what brings you into vital connection with God. The second thing, all right, that you need to do if you are going to bring heaven to earth. How many people want to bring heaven to earth? You want to bring heaven to earth in your family, in your life? The second thing is perception. You must have a perception, all right? Perception means you see into the spirit realm to know what God has for you. Many times you have dreams and you know some Christians don't take their dreams seriously. Sometimes you have dreams. Maybe you have a dream and you saw yourself doing some big things for God. Let's imagine maybe you, you had a dream and you saw yourself preaching or singing before a huge crowd and people are getting saved and they are getting healed and they are getting filled with the Holy Ghost. That is a pointer to God's plan for you in the realm of the Spirit. You have a vision. Or maybe, you know, the servant of God calls you out and gives you a prophetic word. And God tells you, I've called you, I've chosen you, I've spoken to you, I've, my hand is upon you. Anytime you get a prophetic word, it is a pointer to what God has for you in the realm of the Spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? Or maybe you are studying the Bible and the scripture jumps at you. You get a rema. And God gives you a word that is a pointer to what God has for you in the realm of the spirit. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. That's how you pull it down. Now, the third thing that you need to do in order to pull down what is already in the spirit realm for you is consecration. Living a life of holiness. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says, without holiness, no man will see God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, he said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The next one is this imagination. Imagination means using your sanctified mind to see the future. How many of you know that you can sit down in your house and you can travel around the world using your imagination? And let me tell you this. God wants you to use your sanctified imagination to see your future. Can you see yourself healed? Can you see yourself blessed? Can you see yourself being used of God? If you can, if you can see it, then you will see it. But you see, if it is too big for your mind, it will be too heavy for your hands. If you can picture it, if you can, if you can say, I, I see myself blessed. I see this marriage working. I, I see me as a powerful man of God. I see me. If you can use your imagination, that's what God said to Abraham. God said, Abraham, I want you to look as far as your eyes can see. I will give it to you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Now, let me go to the next two very important ones where I'm going to end this message. Intercession. Elijah prayed until he brought the reality of the spirit realm, the rain that he had. He brought it to this realm. If you are going to bring heaven to earth, you must give yourself to prayer and fasting. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everybody say prayer and fasting. Because pulling stuff out of the spirit realm requires time. It requires effort. It requires attention. It requires detail. All right? Listen to me. There is nothing that happens without sacrifice. A lot of people want the glory of God in their lives and they want the ability of God, but they don't want to pay the price. There is a price to pay. Help me to tell somebody I said there is a price to pay. 
And I, I've been telling you the price you have to pay. The price of conviction. All right? The price of, of consecration. Consecrating yourself. I remember this, you know, this woman of God, Catherine Kuhlman. Some of you might know Catherine Kuhlman. All right? Catherine Kuhlman, great woman of God. But it didn't, she did not start out that way. All right? Now, there was a time in her life, all right, when, you know, she knew that the Lord had called her. She knew that the hand of God was upon her. But then she ended up entangled in a wrong relationship. There was a gentleman who came to preach at her church. And the man was, you know, married but was, you know, going through a divorce. And then she became interested in the man. And, you know, one thing led to another. And then, you know, they said they were going to get married. But she knew that was not the will of God for her life. And then, you know, they went through the wedding and, you know, uh, according to history, the day they were getting married, when, the, when she was taking her vows, she fainted three times. Because she knew she was outside God's will, but she went through it anyway. And from that day, the presence of the Holy Spirit departed. Until one day, she went back and rededicated herself to the Lord. Consecration. She said, I knew that if God was going to use me, I cannot be with that man. I knew that if I was going to fulfill the plan of God for my life, I cannot be with that man. And you know what? When she, she turned her back on it, left that house, told the man and said, I'm sorry, we cannot be together because this is all wrong. It was when she made that decision, and I don't know who I'm talking to here today. What is, what is standing between you and your destiny is consecration. What is standing between you and the plan of God for your life and your prophecy is consecration. Maybe there's something God is telling you to give up. Maybe there's something God is telling you to walk away from. Maybe there's a sin, there's a habit, there's something that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about and say, give it up and then I can use you. Benny In, you know, people say that Pastor Benny In, and many of you will know Pastor Benny In, that he is the one that got the mantle of Catherine Coleman. He said this. He said the anointing on Catherine Coleman's life was actually, actually came on her life the last 15 years of her life. 15, only 15 years she moved the world. <laughs> only 15 years. When she made that decision, then the glory of God came upon her. I'm telling you, if you want to pull things out of the realm of the Spirit, what God has in store for you, there is a price for it. There's the price of consecration. There is a price of prayer. There is a price of intercession. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? There is a price of fasting. Hello? Now when we talk about fasting, some Christians just look like, ooh. Because you know, <laughs> but you see, you have to. Glory to God, you have to. Let me tell you this. How desperate are you for the glory of God? Do you, are you satisfied with little? Do you, do you just want a little bit of blessing or you want all that God has in store for you? You see, listen, it's not going to happen without sacrifice. Ma'am, in my country, there are people who are desperate to make money. And they go to spiritualists to make money. And they tell them, you have to make sacrifice. And do you know what? Some of them, the man of God from Africa will know about this. Some of them, they give up their own children. Allow their children to be killed by satanic powers so they can make money. That is the price. Some of them. There is a man, there, 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 there's a brother who, who, you know, was a Muslim and, you know, got saved. And he was telling us his story. He said, before I gave my life to Christ, I walked with someone who was like a, 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 a priest, a, a, a satanic priest. And he said, this man is so powerful in my country that people, politicians and powerful people used to come and consult with him in the night. He said, but the price that he pays is that he does not see the sun. He never comes out of his house. Can you imagine someone never sees the sun 365 days of the year? 
year after year, the day he sees the sun, he will die. He doesn't see the sun, so he's always indoors. That is the bondage that Satan put him in. But aren't you glad that there's freedom in Christ? Glory to God. Hallelujah. But listen to this. Listen to this. Your freedom in Christ is not without a price. It's not without a price. If you want God to use you and you want to be powerful in the hands of God and pull things out, it's not without a price. There is a price that you have to pay. And one of the price is the price of prayer. The word of God says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without season. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, the Bible talks about Jesus. In the days of his flesh, he lifted up prayer to God with cries, with loud cries and tears unto him that is able to save his soul from death. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Jesus did that. Loud cries and tears. Why would Jesus pray like that? What is he looking for is the Son of God. But you see, in order to break the power of the devil over people's lives, he had to pray like that. That is the price to pay. I wanted to ask somebody this morning and say, are you ready to pay the price? Are you ready to pay the price? You can't be a powerhouse for God unless you are prepared to pray. So Elijah began to pray. I don't know if I can try to demonstrate this. Ah, it's hard. He cast himself down and began to pray. Now, theologians tell us that the time he spent praying on Mount Carmel was about 18 hours. How many hours? 18 hours. So, he will pray and then he will send his servant. Go and look. Is there any rain coming yet? He's trying to pull stuff out of the spirit realm. Some of you, God has given you prophecy. God has given you a word. It's not going to happen with you just eating hamburger every day and snacking. It's not going to happen that you have to fast. Some, some, some people think if God says something, it's just going to happen. No, it doesn't happen. You have a role to play to bring it to pass. Listen, God can give you a prophecy and tell you next year you're going to be married, you're going to have a kid, and next year comes, nothing happens. Following year comes, nothing happens. Next year comes, nothing happens. Because you have a role to play. It's not just going to happen. So Elijah said, I want to pull this rain. I've heard the sound of abundance. I want to pull it down. He began to pray. He told his servant, go and look. Is anything happening? The boy went. He looked. They're sorry, nothing is happening. And some people would have been discouraged at that. They said, I've been praying, nothing is happening. He continued. He prayed again a few more hours. He said, go and look. Anything? He said, nothing is happening. He went again. He prayed until after seven times. The man said, I can see a cloud the size of a man's hand. You know, this is why Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to give up. Today, I bind the spirit of give up in your life. Somebody say, amen. amen. Tell somebody, I say, I will never give up. I will never give up. Some of you, when you start to pray, you pray just a little bit. All right. And then you stop. You say, oh, I've been praying. I've been praying. I've been praying. Listen, you have to pray until something happens. Until there's a shift, until the heavens open, until there is rain, until your prophecy manifests, until your husband is saved and your family is saved, you have to pray. Shake somebody and say, you have to pray, you have to pray. Listen, prayer is how we tap into the ability of God. That's how we tap into God's ability. It's by prayer, it's by fasting, it's by consecration, it's by denying ourselves. I, I, are you hearing what I'm saying? That's how we tap into the ability of God. You have to pray. You have to give yourself to prayer. The apostle said, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. How will you pull stuff out of the spirit realm? By prayer. 
by incessant, consistent, no nonsense, I will not let you go type of prayer. God, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I'm not going to stop praying. I'll pray in the morning, I'll pray in the night, I'll pray in the noonday, I'll pray when it's convenient, I'll pray when it's not convenient. David said, evening and morning and noon will I pray and cry aloud and he will hear my voice. Prayer, prayer. I, I, I feel that this nation, all right, this nation is laid back. The body of Christ is laid back in this nation because we enjoy a measure of prosperity. And you see, anywhere you have prosperity, you have comfort, you have people just laid back. But God doesn't want us to be laid back. He wants the blessings he has given to us to be a motivation to seek him the more. To pray the more. I believe if there's anything that God wants you to take home from this conference, it is the spirit of prayer. So that you can experience the God who is more than able. The God who can do exceeding abundantly. Above all, you can ask or think according to his power that is at work within you. How are you going to release that power? It is by prayer. It is by more prayer. It is by persistent prayer. It is by consistent prayer. It is by turning off your phone. Like, 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 like pastor, I don't know the pastor, the pastor that took the offering. But turning off the TikTok and the Instagram and the Facebook and say, I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm going to pray until something happens. I'm, go I'm not going to let God go. I'm going to pray until I see a change in my life. How many of you believe God with me today that God can bring out of the realm of the Spirit the promises that He has given to you? You, you have too many promises that are hanging. How many of you have promises that you are waiting for their fulfillment? Anybody here? How many of you have prophecies and you are waiting for them to be fulfilled? How many of you have things that God has spoken to you and you are waiting for them to be fulfilled? I, I'm telling you, I have seen the power of prayer time and time and time again. I can stand here and give you countless testimonies about the power of prayer, about the effect of prayer. But I'm telling you, prayer is not something that you learn. It's something you do. The best way to learn to pray is to pray. It's not a prayer conference you need. It's a prayer action. Get into prayer. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. And then you will learn to pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And, and I'm not talking about praying, praying for 15 minutes or praying for 20 minutes, you understand? Or praying and you are checking your phone. No, I'm talking about, you know, turning off your phone and giving yourself time. All right? If, if you can start with 25 minutes, start with that and grow. 30 minutes praying, especially praying in tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost. Do that consistently and you'll be able to pull things out of the realm of the Spirit. Can you rise on your feet right now? Rise on your feet. Glory to God. Rise on your feet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift your two hands to heaven. I just have one prayer to pray today. But I want us to sing this song. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we bless your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. your two hands. I want to pray right now. Listen, one of the, one of the grace that God gave to me is the grace of prayer. 
the anointing of prayer, the spirit of prayer, by the election of grace, it's something that God has blessed me with. That when I minister to people, the Holy Spirit stirs that anointing of prayer in their lives. It has nothing to do with me, all right? Nothing to do with me. I'm not saying that I, I have some. No, no. It has nothing to do with me. It's just what God does. And I want to pray right now. If you open your heart, in one minute I'm going to speak the word. Pray that the anointing of prayer will be upon you. That from this conference, you will go with the mantle of prayer. That you'll begin to pray like never before. You'll, you'll have a relationship with God that goes beyond the superficial. And that the Holy Spirit will do a fresh work in your life. Can you lift your two hands as I pray? Father, I've spoken your word. And I thank you for the receptivity of your people. I pray that the spirit of prayer, the anointing to pray, will rest upon everyone that is here today. I pray that, Lord, they will be equipped with the power to pray. I ask that their prayer lives will be revolutionized from this moment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive that grace to pray, to pray without ceasing, to fast, to seek God with the whole of your heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, I pray for all mothers here, all sisters here. You will anoint them to pray, to pray for their families, to pray for their children, to stand in the gap. All men will be anointed to pray. Anoint the young people to pray. Let the spirit of prayer, the mantle of prayer fall upon them from today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every every prayer altar that has been destroyed by the enemy let them be revived now in the mighty name of Jesus Lord I thank you and I give you the glory